and it actually made things more dangerous for us because all those people in the stores um, was increasing everybody's risk of getting sick, you know. But that's just my opinion. A lot of other, you know, rumors and conspiracy theories out there. I don't do horror movies. I can't. I can't. I don't like to be scared like that. I don't like gore and that kind of stuff. I don't find it entertaining. But what I do love is a good conspiracy theory. I love it. To me, that's scary to me and entertaining at the same time. I like, it's like, for me, it's like going on a roller coaster ride. I love, love, love listening to people talk about conspiracy theories. Sometimes they get me too, you know? Sometimes I just like get so absorbed in them because they're pretty damn entertaining and the people who really believe in them are very, very convincing. But you know, if you do enough research, you can kind of see, you know, it's that Occam's razor thing, you know, which is which is most most likely the truth there. But I love it. Um, but what I don't love right now is people spreading disinformation and conspiracy stuff that actually can hurt people right now, you know. And I don't think people do it in a, to be unkind. I think it's like the game of telephone when we were little. One person sends an email, that person sends another email. They heard something else and sends it to somebody else. And before you know it, 8 million people have this email that, you know, might not even have started off to be serious. It might, I don't know. I don't know how these things start. It creates panic. It's the same thing as yelling fire in a crowded movie theater. You don't do that. Um, the reason why is because people can get hurt. So if you do get one of those, you know, um, on social media or in your email box, it says, a friend of mine said that, you know, the president is just about to do this or that. Check your sources. It's easy enough to do. And a lot of those things have been circulating around enough that they've been outed in the media um, or by other people and they're gonna start cracking down on that too so we all need to be super careful it is against the law to do that and just saying things like well it's not my fault somebody sent this to me and I believed it um, that's okay if you want to act on that but it's not okay to propagate that especially if you haven't done due diligence and made sure that you know, this is something that's true. And again, once again, it's very, very easy to fall into that. And I did too. You know, I had, I got, that happened to me a couple of times during this whole thing. And it made me go to the store and buy things I probably wouldn't have purchased. You want to make masks and mail them to a hospital or a nursing home. Um, there are groups that are set up in communities where they will get a bunch of people together you will make them and then everybody will vote where they will drop them off you know because you can't have like 25 people showing up at the hospital delivering masks that's not okay that puts a lot of people at risk so what you do is everybody makes some and somebody has a big rubbermaid box on their porch you know it fills up then that person has agreed to go over to the facility that has asked for them and needs them, and they drop them off as, at a designated spot. Again, nobody's touching the inside of that box. And then when they get there, they're processed. So, you know, just be careful for those things too. If somebody's asking and saying, I, you know, know of a place that needs this, uh, just mail them to me and I'll get them where they need to go. Usually that's a local effort, meaning that let's say you live in Baton Rouge and there's two hospitals there that have the need and have put out the call, then usually the people in the local area will meet that need. And um, so I, you know, the neighbors here are making masks for the hospitals in our county. I wouldn't we wouldn't make them for Texas. Not that we have anything against Texas, but Texas has a lot of 
capable people who are also sheltering in place who can fill that need. And it's, I think it's awesome. I love that people are doing that. It gives you something to do. It makes you feel helpful. And, um, and it is helpful. And it, it shows that people are just so kind and so giving. I love that. There's another leg. That is just some shading. And that's a little overdone. That's a little more blue than I would ever do. And sometimes I won't even do this blue. Again, I'm just experimenting. I want to do a super pale baby. This is the baby I'm working on. It is Alma. Isn't she cute? She's absolutely, absolutely cute. Look at that face. Look at this profile. Oh. The sun is creeping down, so I've got that, you know, late afternoon sun coming through my window and through the trees. It's so beautiful. Hello, everybody. I am still working on the blues on these babies. I, um, I have just Mick to get some veins and some blue modeling on. And sometimes after I do like veining and shading, it'll look really good and then it'll dry and the pigment kind of comes to the surface and it's kind of gritty. Ooh, that just drives me insane. And so I try to like smooth it out and it's hit or miss. Sometimes it'll smooth out and blend and sometimes it'll come right off. It just depends on how you primed your vinyl, um, how thick you put the paint on, and how deep the creases are on the kit. Every time you paint a baby, it's always different. You're using the same colors, pretty much the same techniques, and I've done this kit several times and the baby always comes out different. It's really, really weird that way. But it keeps it fun and exciting. The weather is super nice today and I should have gotten the photography done and I just didn't. I just, I just got caught up in all the other stuff. My little, who just went out of my studio right now, um, started back to school today because spring break is officially over for them. And he didn't go back to physical school. He's doing online school. And his teacher kind of went above and beyond. She's basically teaching from YouTube. And the kids love it. They miss her. When they see her face, they're so happy. At least my kid is. She's just talking to them like she would if they were in the classroom and they're doing little tiny projects. It's not a lot of work. It's probably about a good hour's worth of work. So it's not difficult for me to kind of manage. And basically when he was doing some of the videos that she made, I was sitting here working. So it was a win-win. So I like a baby with a lot of veins. A lot of this will um, just kind of fade um, as I put layers on so it looks a little bit dark here and really when you're painting you have to understand blue because blue can be your friend and it can also wreck everything so you have to be pretty careful and be able to gauge how that's going to play out later so these veins look super super prominent right now when they bake they're going to seem even more prominent the first bake and then little by little, as other layers and colors are going on, they will start to fade and look a little bit more under the skin than they do now. Yep, so my little guy started back at school, and so we just kind of had to figure out how we were going to manage the school thing. I thought it was going to be a little bit more rough than it was. It actually was a great surprise. It turned out really awesome. So now we can get back into a little groove, and hopefully I can do a little bit more, more painting. But this week, my focus is on getting these babies painted, the babies that I have photographed and listed. And I'm not sure if I talked about it, but I was really worried. I stopped listing babies for the longest time because when all this started, I didn't know what was going to happen with the post office situation. I didn't know if, you know, we were going to be able to ship or if just businesses could ship or just essential businesses because that's what we were told in the so beginning. I thought I needed to honor that. And um, it turns out that, from what I understand, the post office isn't saying no to people shipping. They just had to kind of get prepared for that, make sure they got everybody safe. So what they did at my post office, and it's a pretty small post office, 
was they have everybody lining up on tape, like most places now, and they hung very heavy plastic over the front, you know, where you go to the customer service desk to um, mail your packages. They have this really heavy plastic sheets hanging from the ceiling to protect the workers from us, and so the only thing we have access to is the little ATM machine. So nobody's wiping it clean, so hopefully you remember to wash your hands and um, that kind of thing, but you do have to lift up the plastic to give them the package, and they have this tape on the floor that's like, I don't know, it's maybe two and a half feet from the, the scale. So you're gonna have to lift up the plastic Get your package on the scale and try not to, to leave that two foot mark line. So if you have little arms or you're a smaller person, that's a struggle. It was kind of, it was kind of funny. So now that I know that we can go ahead and ship, I'm going to go ahead and start list, uh, listing the babies that I have. And um, I'm trying to think of a way, you know, the safest way to ship. All my babies are packed in Rubbermaid containers. And they've been packed that way for a really long time um, since they were completed, since before this whole virus thing. When I go to photograph them, I'm going to wear gloves. And I'm not going to photograph them on anything in my house, like, you know, my own personal furniture or anything like that. I have a baby basket in here that is covered in plastic. It's got a zippered plastic on it. And so I'm gonna just photograph the basket since it's clean and it um, has all the blankets stored. And all the baby clothes, baby blankets, and diapers are all stored, as you guys seen in my other videos, in a wardrobe that is plastic and it's zip. I'm out of frame and it's bad enough. I'm chatting away. You can't even see what I'm doing. So I think that that stuff's kind of protected. I wear gloves and um, try to do my photography early in the morning before my family wakes up. I will pack them, all my packing boxes are in the front of my garage in a closet, so they're all safely stored. They're not in my house or around us, so I can pack them up. So that's the, I think that's the best that I can do and I'm gonna feel okay. I, you know, I thought about it a lot. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't part of the problem. And I know that people have been asking and asking. So I'll try to get some photography done. I usually post to Etsy first, just because Etsy lets me post as many babies in a day that I want to, they don't care. But on Reborns.com, and I love Reborns.com, what I like about Reborns is that people who shop there know what they want. They're there because they want one of these babies. They don't accidentally fall on one and go, wow, what is that, that would be cool. With Reborns, they only let me post one baby every 24 hours. So sometimes by the time I get a baby up on Reborns, it's already sold on Etsy. I had one lady write and tell me, I'm going to save my stimulus check for a baby. So can you tell me what's on your workbench? I cracked up laughing. I, I don't know. I haven't thought about that. You know, it just it hasn't been on my radar. For the, my oldest he has not left the house and he has been in his studio the whole time. And today was his first time leaving. He just really needed to get out. We needed an errand run. We needed some food at the grocery store, so we sent him out to do it. And uh, he was a little nervous, but I think he was really glad to be outside. It helps, it's a really nice day. I said, so how was it out there? And he said, quiet, empty.